Hi everyone, my name is Nabil and I'm the designer for Kella Interactive. We're into making open source games with open source software and we love to share our process along the way. In this video, I break down my process for creating assets for our games like Tractor Trample and Fishy Business. I'm going to work hard to explain my thoughts in a simple and more technical terms. This is my first video, so please let me know what you like, what you don't, and what you'd like to see me improve upon. So we're going to be see drawing this lovely tractor you see pictured here. I'm going to be using Inkscape and designing a very flat, minimalist art style for the sake of brevity. But I think the workflow I use in this video should be broadly applicable to any beginner wanting to start creating assets of any art style. Just so you have a roadmap of where we're headed, I've written it out here. We're going to gather some ideas from Google Images and Behance. I'll outline the basic shapes we'll be using in our tractor. I'm going to add the first bit of color, refine the shapes, and then add more details such as shadows and lighting. And with that, let's begin. I always like to start off gathering ideas from various sources around the internet, so I can have a tangible idea of what I want to draw in front of me as I draw it. I know when I first started drawing, I tried to draw things from my mind's eye, which always ended up with bad results, mostly because I didn't have an accurate picture of the exact lines and curves that, I, that make up an object when I was trying to draw it. Since I want to draw a tractor, I'm going to search Google Images for, well, a tractor. But to be more specific, I want to draw a really iconic, bright red tractor. So let's search Google Images for red tractor. Boom. Tons of options for us to choose from. I'm going to speed this part up a bit because I'm sure you can handle searching on your own. But basically, I'm going to go through finding tractors I like and saving them off to new tabs for when I'm ready to draw. By the end, I've chosen this really nice looking vintage red tractor that I like a lot. And I've also saved off some cartoony like drawings of tractors as well for me to pull inspiration from la uh, for the later on stages of my drawing uh, when I'm ready to add little details and things like that. All right, finally, two minutes in and we can get back to drawing. I've copied and pasted the tractor I like into Inkscape and I'm ready to start. And what I'm going to do here is just trace some basic shapes like rectangles and circles over the tractor. Now, when I look at this tractor, I see a rectangular body, two circular wheels, and a rectangular exhaust pipe. With these few shapes, we can achieve the basic shape of a tractor. I'm going to begin by drawing a rectangle by hitting the R key on the keyboard and dragging my mouse across the body to get the shape just right. Then I switch over to the ellipse tool by hitting the E key. A good trick to know about Inkscape, about drawing circles, is that if you hold down the Control and Shift buttons while you draw, it will draw a perfect circle centered around the point of origin. It really makes things a lot easier. It's a little hard to explain, but play around with it in Inkscape and you'll see what I mean. After the wheels, I'll draw in two little rectangles for the exhaust pipe, and the basic shape is pretty much done. Now let's just add some colors so that we know what shape is what, and remove the original image. And voila! Now what we'll want to do is study the tractor and see what little details we want to add. Like this curvature at the front of the tractor. To me, that's a really distinctive feature of this and all tractors. You'll also notice how the wheel treads are huge and ridged, so we'll draw those in as well, but let's deal with the tractor body first. To alter the shape of this rectangle object, we're going to need to convert it to a path object first. So select your rectangle, and from the path menu you can select object to path. The sh shortcut is Control shift c Now if you hit the F2 key, you can switch to a path editing cursor and be able to manipulate this rectangle in a couple of interesting ways. You can either edit the nodes that define the rectangle's corners, or you can alter the paths that exist between nodes to whatever curvature you like. I'm going to angle the front end to match that of the real tractor, and also add in some natural curvature to the top as well. This is the stage where some creativity may come into play, so just do what feels right. You can always tweak it later. Now is a good point to step back and think about what you want the final character to look like. I'm going to move my wheels around and just try and achieve the shape that I like. If you hold down the control key while you're dragging objects, you can drag them in straight lines, either horizontally or vertically. It's pretty nice when you're trying to preserve alignment, like we are with the wheels here. Let's shift our focus to the wheels. I want to create this nice ridge tread that the real tractor has, but how do we do it? The way I do it is by manipulating the built-in star tool in Inkscape. Now with the star tool, you actually have three attributes you can edit. The number of spokes, the inner to outer spoke ratio, and the curvature of the spokes. For this larger wheel, I used 12 corners, a spoke ratio of 0.9, and I rounded it to 
There's also a fourth attribute in here called randomized, but I'll let you figure out what that does on your own time. Next, we're going to take advantage of the align and distribute menu. It houses a set of really helpful tools in Inkscape that let you align objects to either the page or other objects. You can activate it by going to the object menu and clicking align and distribute, or just hit control shift A. I'm going to align my ridged wheel with the old circle that I had for a wheel before by selecting both and hitting align by both vertical and horizontal centers. Now I'm going to add in some details to the wheel, like the hubcaps. First, let's alter the draw order by pushing the outer wheel back one layer. A shortcut for this is page down. Now to edit the circle, you can simply select the circle and alter the shape by holding down the control and shift buttons and dragging one of the resizing handles towards the center to shrink it. Now I don't think the wheels on this tractor are very interesting, so I'm going to go for this white wall tire look instead. First, I change the color of the inner hubcap to white, and then I duplicate the circle by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. Then I resize this newly created duplicate circle to shrink, change the color, and I repeat this process until I have something I'm happy with. Now that I have one wheel finished, I'm going to reuse it for the smaller one. To do this, I select the outer ridged wheel and my three inner circles and group them together. A shortcut for grouping objects is Ctrl G. Now once they're grouped, I press Ctrl D again to duplicate this entire group of objects that constitute my wheel. Next, I move it to where the front wheel used to be and reduce the size down. Now, it looks a little busy once it's smaller, so let's ungroup these objects with the shortcut Ctrl Shift G and then select the ridged wheel with the star tool active. I select the number of corners and I bring it down from 12 to 8. And I resize the three, three circles that make up the hubcap, and now the wheels are done. The next thing I want to do is add a black outline to all of the elements I've drawn so far. I'm going to do this for one object first, the tractor body, and then apply the same sized outline to the rest of the elements I have here. Adding an outline to all of your objects will achieve a nice cartoony feel. First, select the tractor body and activate the fill and stroke tools from the object menu. A shortcut for this is Control shift f Now switch to the Stroke Paint tab and select the first option to the right of the X, Flat Color. We want a flat black color for the outline, but we want it to be a little thicker than it is right now. To do this, switch to the Stroke Style tab and just mess with the Width attribute until you have something that looks good. I used a value of 4 here. Once you have one object with a stroke that looks good, you can select all of your objects that you've drawn so far and repeat the above process. Add a stroke with the Stroke Paint tab and then alter the stroke style to make the width equal to 4 or whatever you decided that looks good in the previous steps. Now I'm just going to take this chance and move some of my objects around and tweak some things a bit, so feel free to do what you like here. Alright guys, that's all for part 1. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something. I know we've covered a lot, so feel free to take a break and practice, or we can jump right into part two. In part two of this tutorial, I'm going to go over a few more important concepts and tools from the path menu and bring this tractor to life with some personality and add some extra details with shadows and lighting. You can either click here or find the link in the description.